You get to have a conversation with yourself from 2.5 years ago when the pandemic started. What would you advise or say? What is your guilty pleasure? You can delete one day in history. Which one and why? My birthday. Hey, you okay? Give your friend a hug next time you see him. Dinosaurs are back. Comet day has been skipped. Monday. Every Monday? The day the music died. So bye-bye, Miss American Pie. Whatever day COVID started. April 18th, 1930. The BBC said there was no news that day, so it seemed like a fairly safe day to eliminate. Hey, honey, what day is your birthday again? If your country was a person in high school, how would you describe them? Needs everything on paper, multiple copies, watermark of the high school, a fax number, because the internet is still new territory. Welcome to Germany. Hey buddy, let's be friends, guy. Getting munchies for some poutine now, mm? Holy heck, I felt this in my soul. Super arrogant and bipolar. USA? Of course. Wait, how does this work if every country has different high school tropes? Friends with two of the strongest guys who also hate each other to death. India. Person who always got free periods. The nice kid who's somehow best friends with most popular kid. Let me guess. Canada? Bingo. Good at sport. Everyone's mate. Big drinker. Can only be Australia. How do you respond to what's up? My blood pressure. Eh, not much. This. Not much is always my answer. Inflation. Sadly. Saw it. <laughs> Saw it. <laughs> is it just me or does it smell like Updog in here? Now you might be asking, what is Updog? And my answer to you is nothing much. And I said, hey, 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 I said, hey, oh, what's going on? Chilling, foo. Halloween is coming up. What are you going to dress as this year? I don't know what I'm going to do. Ah, man. Somebody Jar Jar Binks, clearly. Misa in a one piece. I have two costumes ready that require varying levels of effort. I've decided that if I stay home with mom, I'm dressing as a witch. And if I go out, I'm dressing as a plague doctor. Pennywise. Ready to scare some kids this Halloween, huh? My daughter and I will be Nala and Scar from The Lion King. Boy, I bet you're glad they dropped the Scar tried to get with Nala before she dipped subplot. That would be awkward. What? Yeah, that was the original intended reason for why Nala left to find help. Impossible. What's the sitch? Like a cast member from the live adaptation of Cats. I'll haunt your dreams, suckas. As long as you keep your hyper-realistic buttholes out of here, it's fine by me. Just the same exhausted bat <laughs> crazy bitch I dressed as last year. Sleepy <laughs> Vecna. How would that even work? What are you looking forward to in October? Uh, mine personally, um, sometime next week I have to carve a pumpkin uh, with the Fortnite logo on it because that's what my Twitter people voted on. Hey, speaking of which, go follow me on Twitter, by the way. Says Mason Live. I tweet a lot. My taco Halloween costume. That sounds fun and flavorful. My haunted garage. I built walls to set up a small maze in my garage for people in my area to enjoy. It has creepy music, a few animatronics, and other decorations. I did it over two years ago and finally have the chance to do it again. I just decorated my yard for Halloween yesterday and I'm in heaven. Halloween is the best. Leaving for vacation. Hey, I hope you have a great time. Just getting into that time of year. I love everything from Halloween to New Year's. Also, I wanted to appreciate the positivity you're spreading in this thread. It made my day. Sober October. Hopefully I can last the whole month. I hope you accomplish your goal. Yeah, puzzles for breakfast. I hope you do too. The GTA 6 announcement. My brother in Christ, we're not getting that announcement anytime soon. Not with the, the leak and the delay. Wearing flanels and beanies. Halloween. I need to catch ghost Pokemon for a quest thing. Oh, yes, a Pokemon Go player. Hey, does anyone else play Pokemon Go? Because I love Pokemon Go. I play it all the time, almost every day. If you couldn't tell, I like Pokemon. One month closer to tax returns. Get back some of the money stolen from me. What 1990s thing needs to make a comeback? Affordable housing. God, please. I want nothing more in this life to be a homeowner. Indestructible Nokia cell phones. No thanks. Affordable college. You didn't need to take out loans. Oh, but you have to pay for all the fun college campus amenities that you don't use. Grunge music. I, you know, I think we're good. Regular old birthday parties with pizza and cake. Sick of Etsy and Pinterest parties. You know what? That's so true. What happened to going just like bowling and having a pizza for your birthday, huh? God, I want to go bowling. Complete absence of social media and smartphones. Big budget films that aren't superheroes. I mean, those exist. <laughs> like Transformers and uh, Uncharted. This is the only thing I can think of. Those pastel colored windbreakers. Oh yeah. Can we please bring those back? RIP 90s blockbuster action films that were actually fun to watch and didn't explicitly force a social message. Uh, Woke Bad? Mino 
don't like. Shut up. Bowling alley style patterned carpets. What's your opinion on coworkers dating? I think it's okay as long as their private life doesn't interfere with professional life. Like no making out in the office or special treatment. There's nothing wrong with it so long as everything works out. The problem is it doesn't always work out. Ouch. It goes south and now the workplace is infected. Someone once told me, don't and eat in the same place. I don't give a shit what consenting adults do. My best friend and his wife met where we all worked together in the 90s. And they have two wonderful adult kids and have been together like 25 years. Do not dip your pen in the company ink. Bad idea. What should be avoided while being naked? Do not cook up bacon in a pan when naked. Woodworking unless you're working that wood. <laughs> Touching chilies. You don't want <laughs> No. <laughs> not the freaking jalapenos, dude. Oh no. <laughs> don't use a knitted blanket if your nipples are pierced. I feel like this was a personal experience. In my case, mirrors. Please tell. Him fat. Big bone. Yeah. <laughs> Probably being in public. Probably? Probably. What is y'all's favorite dog breed? Whatever my dog is. I have no idea what he is. He's a big old mutt. But his name is Jojo and he's the cutest dog of all time. Way cuter than whatever your dog is. Golden Retriever. Greyhound. They're so sweet and friendly. Alaskan Husky. I met some in Alaska and they are smaller than Siberian Huskies and have different coloring and have the personality of Huskies. German Shepherd. They are not only intelligent, but also incredibly intuitive. They're amazing dogs. Collies, Shelties, or the new love of my life, St. Bernard. I'm just destined to be covered in dog hair all my life. French Bulldogs or Boston Terrier. But the best doggo of all is 100% good dog. Yorkshire Terrier. A lot of people see them as annoying lap dogs, but they are very smart and great dogs when you properly socialize them. Welsh Corgi. Huskies. They have so much personality, and the way they can carry on a conversation with a person is amazing and adorable. I love and miss my Huskies. Poodles are the best. Boxer. I like big dogs. I had a Boxer X Mastiff once, and he was the best boy. Australian Cattle Dog Healer. Can we just all agree that all dogs are good dogs, and there's no such thing as a bad dog, only a bad owner? What song do you want played at your funeral? Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. Uh, actually, it's Welcome to the Black Parade by My Chemical Romance. Whatever. Me too. Anything that will upset my family, but make my friends laugh. Another One Bites the Dust by Queen. <laughs> Sandstorm, Darude. A classic. The Circle of Life from The Lion King. OMG by Usher. I still haven't found what I'm looking for by U2. Johnny Cash. Hurt. These Days by the Foo Fighters. Snoop Dogg. Drop it like it's hot. What's one thing you hated as a child but love now? Bedtime. Speak for yourself. I don't have a bedtime. Naps. Shopping. I hated going around with my mother to watch her window shop, but now on my days off, that's all I do. Silence and quiet. Cleaning. I clean like a motherfucker now, and I'm so happy afterwards. I like to go and look at the newest items and gadgets to help too. Getting spanked. Hey, <laughs> I don't kink shame. To each their own, man. Brussels sprouts. Good stuff. There are so many better vegetables than Brussels sprouts like, I don't know, broccoli, spinach, cauliflower, arugula, carrots, even asparagus. Vegetables, for sure. Not even up for debate. I used to put broccoli in my pockets at the dinner table to hide that I've not eaten them. Today, I love broccoli both raw and cooked. This MF straight raw dog and broccoli. Good lord. Not having anything to do. When I know that I have a day off with no plans, no errands, and a whole day to myself? That's a treat. Mushrooms. Ugh, disgusting. How do you get better at small talk? <laughs> I'm going to be taking notes this thread because, oh my God, do I need it. Be an active listener. Listen to what they say and ask questions that are relevant to what they said. If you encounter someone who isn't interested in talking, happens all the time, find a polite reason to move on. Well, it was nice meeting you. I'm going to get a different drink and I just saw someone I know or the president needs me, etc. Edit. Oh, and actually care about what they say, even if it's not the most interesting thing in the world to you. They're saying something about themselves and the kind thing to do is pay attention. Spend time with people you hate but have to pretend to like. You'll quickly learn how to waste their time with useless conversation topics so you don't have to engage with their actual personality. Try to pick news or recent stuff you read, watch, hear about of you need something to say or increase the conversation length. Take a risk, be real, don't chase funny, and be damn sure you ain't judging. Don't be embarrassed to appear stupid. In my experience, most people will gladly talk to themselves if you only let them. All you have to say is, yeah? Mm-hmm. Huh. Working customer service for a bit and you'll learn quick. I've been in customer service for six years and I still can't freaking do it. It's so hard to small talk. I am so unbearably awkward. What's something that shouldn't exist? Those YouTubers with dyed hair and clickbait thumbnails will not stop screaming in every video. Animal abusers. TikTok. I don't think I need to explain. I don't know, man. TikTok's pretty fun. Child beauty pageants. Mosquitoes. It's sad that not only does stuff like sexism, racism, and homophobia still persist, but it's actually worsening in some parts of the world. Humanity. Nah, JK. It's not Nestle. Vapes. Reddit. So true. Hey, 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 hey. Only after Twitter. What causes you to snap in an instant? Someone pulling at my clothes. I go from zero to incandescent in a fraction of a second. I only discovered this is an issue for me in the last few weeks when my toddler
toddler started pulling on my clothes. Literal instant rage. I have to ramp down. So freaky. The wind. It makes me so angry. Don't talk to me if it's windy. When people blow through yield signs. People using Bible quotes to win an argument. People talking in the cinemas while the movie's on. Hearing that godforsaken baby shark song. People touching my glasses on the fucking glass part. When I get my earphone or headphone cables tangled in something when I get up. Really gets to me. Probably a sign I should just go wireless at this stage. If someone sucks their teeth at me, I tell them if they do it again, I'll knock every damn one of those teeth out of their mouth. A really smooth jazz beat. What is your dream job? Absolutely nothing. Working is not part of my aspirations. Retired financial set for life. One that pays enough for me to live in the GTA without having to work two jobs. To be an archaeologist like Indiana Jones. Department of Natural Resources and Wildlife Technician. Send me in the backwoods to explore areas that are undisturbed, chief. A drummer. Name checks out. I work the conveyor belt in a tooth factory and I keep losing my actual teeth. What's better with butter? Just about everything. Corn on the cob. Toast. I prefer my toast with jelly. Mashed potatoes. A brezel. Portuguese muffins. Also blueberry muffins that are toasted. Warm banana bread. It would be easier to list things not better with butter. Popcorn, corn on the cob, green beans, and a baked potato. Scrambled eggs and cook them in butter. What are the worst places you could get stuck in? North Korea. Hey, I mean, speaking straight facts right now. Rural East Texas, especially after dark, and if you're a person of color. A wood chipper or an industrial shredder. A Denny's bathroom. An underwater cave. Ah, don't worry, I got a potion of water breathing on me. Your zipper. Ugh, ha, ha. God, I shivered just thinking about that. Russia. Oh, yeah. An enclosed water slide. Ooh, no, that just, it triggers my claustrophobia. It gives me the heebie-jeebies. What is the most satisfying smell? Whatever that one smell is from childhood after mom cooked your favorite dinner. The smell of dish soap in that meal is a unique smell. The smell after cutting grass. Cinnamon. Fresh laundry. Vanilla. Baking bread. The smell of banana bread. Oh, oh, so good. Rain. My favorite smell personally. Fuel. A new book. Fucking <laughs> nerd. When I fart and it clears the room, the more, oh my gosh, that's disgusting, the better. It's the smell of satisfaction. <laughs> this guy's a freak. This guy's a sociopath. Christ almighty. Coffee while you're still asleep. Waking up to that is love. The smell that rolls in on a cool breeze right when the sun is going down in early fall and everything is quiet. Women with long fake nails? How in God's name do you wipe? Easy. You just wipe with the tissue across your fingers instead of digging up in there with the tips. You, you wipe more long with nails. The nails act as a poo shovel. I just threw up a little. <laughs> hey, I think I did too. I have long natural nails, but I've never understood this question. Are you guys sticking your fingers up your ass when you wipe? Like, what? You just wipe it like normal. I mean, not a normal where fingers enter the ass hole, but you know, my normal where I just wipe it with toilet paper. The nails don't get in the way. I don't notice a difference when I have shorties. They use the three seashells. Get some press-ons and try. I can't describe it. You're like, just do. Even when my nails are short, I'm not scraping my hole with them. Built-in poop knives. With toilet roll, obviously. Better question, how do you do anything at all? Maybe some of them have bidets. Bidet to you, sir. Who's a fictional character that's clearly a jerk, but you can't help love them? Everybody on Always Sunny. Beat me to it. By season nine, I'm starting to hate Dennis most of the time, but the rest of them I love. I should be clear that I love hating Dennis. Negan from The Walking Dead. He's clearly a sociopath, but the smile and playful attitude makes him somewhat likable. Didn't he kill everyone's favorite character? Spoilers, I'm sorry. My bad. Mr. Bean. The Joker. With all that happened to him, no wonder he turned dark. Jack White. Okay. Snape. Gaston. No one entertains me as much as Gaston. Ascow from NGE. I don't know what that is. Sherlock Holmes. Eric Cartman. Bojack Horseman. Seek some help, my friend. What food ingredient could be added to any food and still taste great? MSG. A pinch of salt. Works well in savory and sweet food alike. Real butter. People think restaurants are magic or something for reliably making food that tastes better than what you make at home. The difference is that they use butter rather than seed or vegetable oil. Fat isn't evil. It's what flavor sticks to. Cheese. Definitely. Water. Especially if you're frying something, makes food flaming hot. Honey. Salt or sugar. Almost all foods contain either or both in some form. MSG fuel. In caveman language, what was your worst date like? I show rock, but she don't like rock. She like twig. I bring twig. She like rock. Ugh. Feel that in Ugg's soul. Me go hunting with new tribe friend. Instead, find place where mammoth already dead. People trade shinies for meat, say good enough. While eat, choke on meat, spit in tribe friend face. Him mad. Lucky him forgive. Me rock brain stupid. Me no tribe friend long time before realize tribe friend really love friend. He say hunting trip really date and me stupid dum dum. Lucky he try again. Sex good. Spill milkshake bad. Bed yuck. Still marry. Yabba dabba do. That sound like good. One time me did yabba dabba don't. She only looked at the Uga Bunga device. Ugh, chug many mug of 
grug, go blug, ug, incomprehensibly remorseful. <laughs> she a 10, but unga when I bunga, when I ooga she booga. So like a hard four. What video games are more fun to watch others play? Horror. The games I am bad at. Cod Zombies Easter eggs. All. I like to play occasionally, but to be honest, video games kind of stress me out. I always feel like I'm making an ass out of myself and f***ing up what should be smooth gameplay. VR, when the player accidentally interacts with the real world. Guitar Hero and Rock Band. I'm pretty dexterous and actually good at music, but I suck at those games. I can't get past medium difficulty ever. Any game that's cutscene heavy. I love playing games, but if I'm interrupted every 20 minutes with a three minute cutscene, I just can't get into it as much. They're fun to watch because I like the story, but a lot of cutscenes take me out of the game experience. None of them. I'm with you. Watching other people play games is like watching paint dry. I don't get it. I like watching other people that I like have fun. I think is the thing that I'm about. What is your guilty pleasure? Making funny faces in grocery stores at babies while their parents aren't looking. Mine is Dua Lipa. There, I said it. Cleaning my ear with a Q-tip, especially when you get that cold water on it. Ah, damn. Farting loudly when I'm alone. Feels good. 80s synth pop. F*** it. Fan fiction. Y'all ever read Heat Waves? <laughs> Writing terrible self-indulgent escapist fantasy that no one but me is ever or will read. Watching Handmaid's Tale and eating pancakes. You get to have a conversation with yourself from 2.5 years ago when the pandemic started. What would you advise or say? Prepare yourself. You're about to find out that there are a lot more assholes in the world than you originally thought. Ironically, I just caught COVID yesterday for the first time. Was starting to think I was a master dodger. Don't panic. You're not gonna run out of toilet paper. I'm sorry for all the trauma. I hope we get better. That donut you're planning to leave on your desk for tomorrow? Take that home now or you're not seeing it for two years and when you do you'll wish you hadn't don't buy those jimmy eat world tickets this is gonna go on for a while and one of your favorite restaurants is gonna go under because of it so go eat there now worst feeling of all time one of your favorite restaurants goes god men of reddit what makes you cry the ending of gladiator again sue me i haven't watched gladiator okay the end of lord of the rings when aragorn tells the hobbits my friends you bow to no one then he bows to them and everyone else follows when I feel really lonely in my empty house. Ah, uh, don't be so sad. I'm in your walls. Interstellar. That scene where he watches years of kids' life go by in a matter of minutes is absolutely brutal. Oh, that scene kills me every time. Just, ah, oh, the f- Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. Onions. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess that'll get you. When I'm laying on the couch, head on my wife's lap, and she's lightly rubbing my back or running her fingers through my hair. Nobody else has ever just done that, and it's nice. Makes me cry. That does sound very nice. Uh, can someone do that to me, please? The ending of Coco. All right, it definitely takes a lot for me to cry, but that definitely pulled on the heartstrings. That Futurama episode with Fry's dog. Oh, why'd you gotta remind me that I t I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa! My face. Oh, d don't be so hard. You probably look fine. What could you say that would immediately piss off an entire community? BTS is overrated. Most of you don't really need an emotional support pet with you at all times. You're just entitled and feel you should be able to take your dog wherever you want. There is a big difference between emotional support animal and service animal. Scientology is genuinely vile practice and the sooner we stop accepting them, the better. Will someone please let Tom Cruise out of the closet? Mormons are Christians. So are Muslims, TBH. Being obese is unhealthy. Ha, <laughs> I see it already. Stop fat slash body shaming. If they are comfortable in their own skin, then that's all that matters matters, proceeds to eat unhealthily and wash it down with a Diet Coke in the name of a balanced diet. Body positivity. Like, no, it's actually concerning, and sure, everyone will have different reasons, but also you only have one body. It's so important to take care of it. I kind of hate this answer, because while being obese is technically unhealthy, the scale is completely broken, because there are a lot of larger people out there in media that are incredibly healthy. I mean, just look at Lizzo. Insert anything that has a fandom is shit. Red it. I mean, hey, you said it, not me. Gail was far better than PETA. The guy couldn't even ask Katniss out. Tons of PETA stands running at me with pitchforks and daggers. Yeah, but that dude was also complicit in getting Katniss's sister killed, so... Mm. Calling any group of people sheeple really gets under their skin for some reason, lol. Fur babies is such a stupid phrase. Plant mom. This one is good because it gets everyone mad. The people who say it get offended, and the rest of us get mad being reminded that people say 
say it at all. Star Trek and Star Wars are the same thing. Jehovah's Witnesses is just a glorified cult. I think you could say that for most religions. What is your contribution to your country? Being a cog in the machine and doing nothing more. Taxes. It is crazy how integral taxes are to, like, living in this country, but yet we still don't know how to do them. My contribution is that I left it. Hey, you want to hit me up? I, I need to figure out how to do that. Voluntarily work for democracy by helping during elections. That's actually incredibly admirable. Thank you for your work. I can sing the national anthem. Hey, I mean, that's more than I can say. Mate, I'm just keeping an eye out. I save water by collecting rainwater. Did you know for some reason that's illegal? I, I don't understand why. Not causing mass destruction here. I support local businesses. As you should. Though if they are kind of scummy and they don't treat their employees correct, then they shouldn't be a business at all. I made a wooden arch over a garden at my old elementary school. That's actually really sweet. I, I like people giving back to where they came from. Who was the friendliest person in history? I don't know. I didn't meet him. This guy from Hell's Kitchen named Sterling. He was so sweet and friendly that his opponents cried when he was eliminated and he even made Ramsey smile. After the show, he got offered a ton of opportunities to work at fine dining restaurants, including those owned by Ramsey. But he turned them all down. The reason was that he wanted to work as a chef at the hospital that saved his mom's life and treats his sister's cancer to thank them, even though he's not paid very well. Truly the TV personality we didn't deserve. Bob Ross, a true genuine legend. Probably Daryl Davies. He's a black guy who goes to KKK rallies to make friends with dudes and get them to leave the clan. That's pretty damn friendly. He's certainly very brave. I've read about him previously. He deserves more recognition for his work. Friendly? Genghis Khan. He was so friendly that his DNA is present in about 16 million men and an unknown number of women today. Probably somewhere around 16 million. Steve Irwin. Just look at all those gorgeous creatures he's enthusiastically championed. Even as he died, he made sure to get out his last message, don't hurt the little fella that hurt me. It's my own fault. Still breaks my heart. R.I.P. Steve. And his family seems super sweet, kind of continuing the legacy. Definitely Ellen DeGeneres or James Corden. Thank you for the tonal indicator because I did not know if you were being serious or not. What's the next big thing that's going to change the world? AI. It's already starting. AI technology has advanced a ton, but uh, if you like AI art, then I think your dad might be dumb. AI imagine processing. Deep fakes are going to change the world of <laughs> and politics and my cynical I can't see it being anything but bad. Oh yeah, the leaps and bounds I've seen with deep fakes recently is actually scary. The death of Putin. It will be interesting to see how the world changes after that. Genetic engineering. That is a dangerous game, but we have made a lot of progress. World War 3. Come on, man. Don't, like, throw that info to the universe. Then it might happen. Hopefully, empathy. Climate change. Yeah, I'm not excited to see the results. Extinction, possibly. I just wish I could see the world after humans are gone, because it would be very fascinating to see nature retake cities. What is something a girl or guy can wear that makes them more attractive to you? Here come people saying, oh, they're more attractive when they wear nothing. Uh. Like many men, and women for that matter, my sense of reason is blinded by a sundress. Nice butt plus jeans. Simple, but what a delight. The skins of my enemies. It's only attractive if they keep it from smelling too bad, you know? Women look good in hats. Dunno what it is. I enjoy a hat on a lady. It's their neck. Well, now you have to explain what kind of hat. Is it like a sun hat, a baseball hat, a fedora? You never know. Nothing. Ditto. All right, bonk, bonk. Get in the jail. Vans. Interesting choice. I often don't look at people's feet, so uh, whatever, whatever suits your fancy. I'm generally attracted to people the most when they're attracted to me as well. If it's not mutual, then it's just not there. What personality trait instantly makes you want to be friends with someone? Honest and real. Forget the small talk. Let's talk about how f***ed up we are and laugh about it a bit. <laughs> Being kind of socially awkward. I'm the same, so the fact that we're getting along and talking right now is already a good sign. Dry humor. I still don't know exactly what dry humor means, but I've been told I have it, so I guess there's that. In a group setting, they make the effort to talk to me and include me in the group. Absolute 10 out of 10. You can't ask for more. Self-awareness, but also humility, intellect, and humor. Friendly, funny, caring. To me, that sounds like the bar is very low, but unfortunately a lot of people, they are below the bar. I would die for anyone who shares their snacks with me. Honestly, I hate when people say, that's embarrassing. So for me, I love people who do whatever they want and don't care about what others will say. Yeah, just a weird shame.
lamey thing to tell a friend. What true thing can you say that will make Reddit hate you? A lot of y'all need to shower. Again, they said it, not me. I go outside a lot. A sun dweller. Burn him. No, I was joking. I hope you get sunburns. Sunburn and skin cancer. Okay, that last one took it a little far, all right? We are no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. Emojis are okay to use. Reposting for karma is not cool. I'm not a big fan of cheese. I follow a religion, and I like it. Me too. You're allowed to follow a certain religion, but just don't shove it down our throats, you know? Nickelback isn't that bad. Preach, sister. You all probably wouldn't be so depressed if you stopped spending all your free time on Reddit. I really hate mac and cheese. Okay, WTF? Yeah, how do you not like mac and cheese? Didn't realize this post was r slash conservative. What song has the best music video? Ooh, that's a really tough pick. Thriller. I can agree with that one. It's like a full-blown movie. Aha, uh -huh, take on me. Oh, the rotoscope effect is so cool in that. Freedom 90 by George Michael, Missy Elliott's The Rain, Childish Gambino's This Is America, and Beyonce's Formation. If you haven't seen the utter nonsense that is the radioactive music video, please do yourself a favor and check out this advertisement for underground Muppet cage fighting. Unfortunately, that video is still burned into my brain, so you can't trick me into listening to Imagine Dragons. Black or White by Michael Jackson. Weezer, Buddy Holly. Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Never Gonna Give You Up. That one just always seemed so fun. They're just dancing around, having a good time. The Scientist by Coldplay, or for VFX, Up and Up by Coldplay. Okay, I do actually really like The Scientist music video because of they filmed it all backwards, but it looks so good. Okay Go, This Too Shall Pass. Well, Okay Go is just cheating because they make all of their music videos cool. Genghis Khan. I got really confused there. I forgot that that's the name of a song. What is a movie or TV show that would not fly if it was made today? Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles could not be made in this day and age. The actors would look at the script and say, this is just Blazing Saddles. It already exists. Well, you're not wrong. Married with Children. Married with Children was actually subversively progressive. You could reboot it easily. Tropic Thunder. Oh yeah, total product of its time. I, ooh, that movie. Birth of a Nation. This is kind of cheating. By they literally did a remake of it in 2016. The Office USA. I put it on in the background since Comedy Central plays it constantly, and you can kind of spot when writers started to feel, ooh, this won't age well, even as a farce, and curb some of the cringeworthy stuff. Even Carell said some of the early material wouldn't fly nowadays. Well, yeah, Michael Scott was kind of racist. White chicks. Yeah, anything that really plays on race things are very risky. MASH. Love this show. I was always confused hearing that it was a TV show because I'm like, how do you make a full show out of the little game you play with your friends? Almost any 80s sitcom. Little Britain. I've never heard of this one. Mrs. Doubtfire. Really? I don't think that's too bad, is it? What are your opinions on Gen Z's? You can't generalize an entire group. Some are wonderful, some are losers. You have that in every generation. The early dad sons will always be cool. The 80s, 280s, and 3 300 will never be as recognized. The 90s 300ZX Twin Turbo was a beast. The 350 and 370 are great little motors and very tunable. The new Z with the retro styling will definitely be a hit. Oh, I get it. It's a car guy thing. Okay, I, no wonder I didn't know. Smallest generation in American history. Gen Z is going to have a lot of weight on their shoulders in another 20 years. Labor shortages are now systemic. Employers and military recruiters. Take note. I find them annoying, but no more so than my generation was at that age. Young people are overly idealistic because they lack life experience and think they know everything. That's not generation specific. I am one of them and I hate us. Same. 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 Yeah, and I guess I'll throw in another same. Millennial here. Gen Zs are really eager for experience, very smart with technology, grew up with it, are really sociable, and care a lot about being treated with respect and fairly. Something I've noticed is that some of them like to find issues with things when they're isn't an issue. This can be harmful because if so many minor things are seen as issues, then it diminishes the severity of actual issues. I think it's a mix of everybody wanting to be unique and it kind of just gets everything muddy. As a Gen Z, we suck. I'm Gen Z and I think humanity is evolving backwards. I have noticed the trend that we are kind of stupider, but I don't think we'll ever get to Jupiter. They're arrogant s**ts who can't rollerblade. They think Vaseline is some sort of foster parent. What's your favorite
favorite easy, relatively cheap hobby that doesn't involve a screen. Walking. Walking is peaceful too, in my opinion, especially during the fall. Guitar and reading. Guitar can be expensive at the beginning if you don't know what to buy, so you buy like the most expensive guitar. Gym. But the smell. Oh. Playing Monopoly. You see, that would be good, but uh, I don't have people to play with. Draw random sh and calligraphy on random pieces of paper. That is a nice way to spend time, doing little doodles. I feel lame, but I like reorganizing slash rearranging my surroundings. Not cleaning though, I wanna be clear. D&D, &D. it's almost free, just have the character sheets and books. Yeah, I mean, most stuff you can just find online. You don't even need to buy the actual guidebooks necessarily. What do you have little tolerance for? Lactose, mm. Just be tolerant of it, duh. People being assholes. People who try to control other people's lives. Just mind your own business. People with really mean looking pit bulls who seem irresponsible with them. Generally, if a pit bull or any dog is really aggressive and mean, it's probably how they're being raised. People that are rude and mean to their kids in public when their kids aren't doing anything wrong. What kind of human do you think you're raising by treating them like that? People playing games. If it's anything but a super short game, I'm gonna tell them to off. Stay away from Twitch then, I guess. Jeez. People being late. Currently waiting on friends that are late. Loud, rude, and obnoxious people. Especially in a public setting. Like, come on, man. Just turn the volume down. Movies based on true stories that don't actually line up with what happened. Movies based on books that don't line up with what happened in the book. Example, Maze Runner. Intolerance. So you can only tolerate people equally or more tolerant than you. What's a saying you can't stand anymore? If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Hard pass. Everything's gonna be okay. I mean, I appreciate the sentiment in it still. It is what it is. Okay, like you don't like the actual phrase or like the meme version of it is what it is. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Yeah, right. Inhaling mercury and licking bricks of lead didn't kill me. We are all in this together. Yeah, go back to high school and have your little musical. Two wrongs don't make a right. Thus two shall I'll pass. Yes, but when? Sorry, they're just the grammar needs some work. What are stereotypes that you've heard about white people? They can't jump very high. Listen, I can get about three inches off the ground and then I get scared. They never leave haunted places at the first sign of paranormal activity. It's cause all of us white people really want to have our like main character moment, even though we're just gonna get killed. Classical or country music, cheese eaters, low spicy food tolerance. It's because most white people don't use spices in their food at all. They physically can't sing happy birthday without looking miserable. This is so oddly specific, lol. They can't dance. Eh, there are a few people that prove that wrong, but that's generally the case, yeah. We'll gentrify the f*** out of anything. Last year's trailer park is this year's eco-friendly tiny home villa. Oh, that one hurts because yeah, it is what happens. We kiss our dogs. I do. Kissing dogs is fine so long as there's no tongue involved because then you're a freak. Oof, ouch. This this mayonnaise is so spicy. How have you hit genetic jackpot mentally or physically? I have no real addictions or mental conditions that inhibit me from living a normal life. Well, geez, no need to brag. My dad had completely gray hair in his 30s. My uncles on my mother's side are completely bald. I'm 37 and I have a full head of lustrous black hair. Haven't checked if the mailman had black hair though. I stay slim without trying. Again, no need to brag. I have a positive blood type. Perfect score. I look 10 years younger than I actually am. I have great teeth. My hair is fantastic and I have a nice rack. Thank you, parents. I'm tall and have the brains to learn fast if I actually tried. I'm tall, I guess. Of course, I'm also full of factory defects and parts that should have been put on recall. I'm tall and kind of smart. Other than that, I'm screwed. Hairy and bald. Crooked nose. Small dong. Little overweight. Destroyed mental health. People say my thick curly hair. I say I'd kill to have your thin hair. It's hell to take care of my hair, especially when it gets long. I tan very easily without much burn. Too bad I'm indoorsy, so it largely goes to waste. My face is symmetrical. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because have you ever done the mirror filter and seen your symmetrical face? That's kind of eh. Which country has the best cuisine? I'd say generally most Asian countries, in my opinion, just because I really like rice and they just know how to work it. Italy or Thailand? It's a too close to call. All I know is that it's 
not England, they can sure boil a good steak. All, all are good. Finally, some good fucking food. Gordon Ramsay. Spain. I'd say Japan. Sushi, ramen, soba, shabu shabu, katsu bowls, okonomiyaki, yakitori, Japanese steakhouses. I've been to a decent number of countries and I love to eat the cuisines of those countries as part of the trip and I have never enjoyed myself more than in Japan. Mexico. By a mile. I will admit Mexican food does really hit. In my humble correct opinion, Japan. For me, it's India. Everything is flavorful, but not too rich to be enjoyable. Just right. Mmm, mango lassi, chicken tikka masala, and garlic naan brings a tear to my eye with its perfection. I still haven't tried a lot of Indian food, but it does sound really good. Wakanda. But have you ever tasted the food? Like, is it real? China. I pray to the dim sum gods, lol. What desert can you not resist if it's presented? Oh boy, buddy, you're in for a big one. I'm partial to the Mojave. I live in the Mojave. I like that it snows sometimes. Hard to choose, but I'd say the Gobi. Gobi or go home. The Sahara, of course. It's the standard. Antarctic. Oh, exotic. Martian. Getting to see any of them. I've never been in a climate that isn't so wet that spring is usually accompanied by the ground slurping and the grass needing mowed every other day or every break in the rain. Great Sand Sea in southern Egypt. Some cool rock formations and whale skeletons in the area. I'd rather not be in any desert. All right, question asker, uh, real quick, just remember to always spell check before submitting. What did your parents get right slash wrong when raising you? Raised in cult. I was told I would never make to 18 because the end of world would happen and I would be killed. Why bring kids into the world if you believe that? I'm glad they never gave me a sibling. Right. Strong work ethic. Wrong. Racist. No worries. I ended that when I moved out and when raising my children. Well, thank God, but that's still weird to list. I was raised fatherless. Don't worry. I'm your dad now. Come here, sport. Eh, could have done without the religion stuff, TBH, but rest was fine. What Nintendo 64 game still holds up today? Superman 64. It's just as horrible today as it ever was. Banjo-Kazooie. Star Wars pod racing, surprisingly. I still think Super Mario 64 is fun. While it is a little messy, it's still a really good game. 007 Goldeneye and Mario Kart 64. Well, you gotta stick with the classics. Pokemon Stadium. Absolutely. Yes, 100%. I wish they would make another game like it, but they just, they, they haven't, and I need them to. Dr. Mario. Was that on the Nintendo 64? I thought that was only Super Nintendo. Mario Kart 64. Mario Tennis was my jam. That was on 64 also? What is happening? Which profession does the world need less of? I'd say realtors or, air quote, profession landlords. Telemarketers. I've actually been one, and even at the company I worked for, which was actually a legit company with a meaningful market share of its industry, there was still a lot of shady going on in the ways we're supposed to make sales. I can't even imagine what it must be like at smaller, less professional companies. If the big boys in the cold call business are pieces of I can't believe how bad all the boiler room spots are. I actually did do telemarketing for a minute, and it was very awful. It's so bad. Influencers who promote nothing but dumb shit. Paparazzi. I don't even know how that's a profession. All you're doing is stalking people and getting the worst photos of them possible. Social media influencers. They are a dime a dozen and honestly contribute nothing to the world except leeching off the worst parts of social media. Honestly, I think that useless celebrities like the Kardashians provide more to the world than influencers do. I mean, that one's hard because the Kardashians are just TV influencers, not necessarily social media. Influencers. Wannabe models too lazy to put in actual effort other than online, in my opinion. I think the world would be a better place if there were fewer debt collectors, due to fewer people being in debts they can't repay. Dog breeders. I think breeding dogs is okay so long as they keep it humane and they don't just pump out dogs at like an insane rate. Talking about puppy mills here. What is your favorite word for a group of something being called? A murder of crows. Crows really got just such a cool name compared to a gaggle of seagulls. <laughs> a complaint of Karens. Now, now that one is new. I've never heard that before. The phrase you're asking for is a collective noun. A group of pandas is called an embarrassment. Why? That's so mean. A gaggle of geese slash ducks. Yeah, gaggle is just such a weird word. A large group of people is called a fuck that. That is the true scientific term, by the way. A blessing of unicorns. I've never heard that one either, but that does sound nice. You know, I feel like I learned a lot this episode. What's an animal that if 
if it wasn't real, would be thought of as a mythical or legendary creature. Surprise, no one has mentioned the octopus yet. So super intelligent, unnatural colors like blue or just completely changing colors. Glow in the dark, oil jets, able to squeeze through tiny gaps. Just amazing. The axolotl. MF looks like a Pokemon, and it can regrow body parts to an extreme degree. <laughs> Whooper moment, am I right, fellas? Giraffes. A horse with a horn is a step too far, but an animal with a seven foot neck it uses to fight with is apparently normal. The rhinoceros. It's believed that first accounts about them resulted in the myths about unicorns, in which case we still think of them as a mythical creature. The platypus. Honestly, a jackalope sounds more believable than this animal. What? What's wrong with the semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal of action? Huh? You got, you got problems with the platypus? Pretty much any animal if described from the proper perspective to the right person. Blue whales. It's hard to comprehend just how gigantic they are. Which moment in a kid's show or movie have disturbed you the most as a child? Macaulay Culkin dying in My Girl. Pinocchio. The boy turning into a donkey crying for his mama? My heart is beating faster just thinking about it. Littlefoot's mom dying in Land Before Time. I see that specific response to a lot of posts about this kind of stuff. Was it really that traumatic? I don't remember it <laughs> at all. It seems like it's just the Bambi scene, but with dinosaurs. And instead of a man with a gun, it's a meteor. The scene in Never Ending Story. You know the one. Are we talking about the horse? They're, they're talking about the horse. 36 years old, and I still can't bring myself to rewatch it. I cried and made my sister turn it off when that scene came on when I was like eight, and I hadn't had the courage to try watching it again. Those flying monkeys. Bambi's forest fire. E.T. Any scene with the alien, especially the one when it looked like a white chunk of dog poo laying in a creek. The giant baby in one episode of the Rugrats. Large Marge. So terrifying. The witches. When they all took their mask off. What is the best struggle meal? Red beans and rice. Spam and rice. The poor Hawaiian kid special. I'll say it a million times. Spam is some of the best meat, food, whatever. So good. I love spam. I had spam the other day in a sandwich and I had some spam before that with some eggs. Oh, so good. Noodles. Nothing wrong with instant noodles. Toast with butter and sugar. The comfort food I had when poor as f was grilled cheese that you dip in warm tomato soup. Tastes like pizza and I still do it from time to time. Good old classic peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Soft fried egg added to a tortilla with cheese and salsa. Put back into the pan for a minute to get the tortilla crispy. A nice big bowl of sleep for dinner. I used to just put a slice of bread with a slice of cheese in the microwave for like 20 seconds and then roll it up. Beans on toast. That's why they call me the baked bean queen. Ew, are you British? Disgusting. Which conspiracy theory do you believe and why? The killer clown craze from 2016 was a guerrilla marketing campaign for the IT remake that got way out of hand. Even if you want to install McAfee, it still comes back. The CIA keeps posting this question to Reddit to see how many people are into them. I'm, I'm gonna assume that means onto them. I don't think anyone's into the CIA. My fave conspiracy theory that the T-Rex arms are short little arms. Turn them around and they're tiny wings like an ostrich. I fucking love this. I'm down to believe this and you'll have to show me an intact T-Rex or invent time travel for me to do anything but quietly believe otherwise. That the dittos are failed new clones. I know this one is deep. Guys, I'm, I'm gonna talk about Pokemon, all right? Think about it. Ditto and Mew are both pink and the shinies for both of them are both light blue. It's the same thing. They're the only two Pokemon that can know transform. They, they, oh God. It's so cool. It's such a good theory. It's so cool. Andrew Tate is John F. Kennedy's daughter. Excuse me? TikTok is intentionally feeding American children dumbing content while contrarily feeds Chinese children math and engineering content owned by China's government. Also, it's likely backdooring your phone if you have the app to take info of yours. Too many conspiracy theories all at once? This one is just a fact. Ivana Trump did not fall downstairs by herself. I also think there are probably more classified documents buried with her. I just saw the most evil person post. So who is the best or most saintly person alive today? Probably someone you don't even know and is not famous. The person who buys the needy food and doesn't post it on social media. Dolly Parton. James Harrison. The special antibodies in his blood have saved the lives of two million infants. He has donated every week until the age of 81, risking his own health to save the lives of others. He's a hero. The person reading this. I love you, homie. Aw, stop. Oh, so sweet. David Attenborough. For sure. My mom. Betty White. <laughs> they said alive. Got him. Get it? Because Betty White is dead. According to the local news, it's John Cena. What is one thing that tells you with 100% certainty that someone is boring? 99% of the time, someone has introduced themselves as an entrepreneur. My night has been very, very boring. All they talk about is other people and it's always negative. The only thing they talk about is themselves. People that need to cut off someone else's story or conversation just to correct something they said. Interesting people are interesting. In other words, people who don't take an interest and are not curious about others in a conversation are boring. Not asking questions from you and just talking about themselves is a clear red flag. If they always complain about being bored, what's the saying? If it smells like shit everywhere you go, you should check your shoe. Something like that. Only boring people get bored. They like Jeopardy. It's me. I'm someone. Hey, nothing wrong with Jeopardy. Jeopardy's fun. I don't really listen to music. I would. I could never be friends with 
with someone who doesn't listen to music. Even if it's music I don't like. I'd rather be friends with someone who listens to country music than someone who doesn't listen to music at all. As long as they're not a conservative. <laughs> Ooh. What song are you currently listening to? A Spotify ad. Want a break from the ads? Okay. Welcome to the internet. I believe that's Bo Burnham. Regulate by Warren G featuring Nate Dogg. Killer Queen by Queen. Is that a JoJo's reference? Bad Religion. Feel Good Ink by the Gorillas. Sea Bat. Are you, are you f***ing? <laughs> <laughs> Al Green, Stay Together. My Future by Billie Eilish. First time I'm listening to it, it's nice. Du Hast by Romstein. Who by Fire by Leonard Cohen. Recently fixed up my old CD player for the nostalgia. I once pronounced when I was in middle school, I pronounced Leonard as Leonard in front of my entire um, eighth grade language arts class. I got laughed at. Dang. Mac Miller featuring Anderson Pock. The Sound of Silence. No, literally. No music is playing. What do you hate about the education system? How grades are so emphasized in order for a student to pass instead of if they actually understand or not. Most students only do what they have to to pass, not to learn and actually understand what they're being taught. People other than teachers making curriculum. People who have never been in a damn classroom telling me how to do my job. How they talk to you. The authoritarianism of it all. The whole educational system is based on teachers' unpaid labor. The people that come up with the curriculum. I live in Texas, so... Gestures broadly. How do you feel about guys with painted nails? If I could live in a house without judgment, I would have my nails painted all the time. I just think it's fun, personally. Just for me. It doesn't concern me at all. What really concerns me are people that care in the slightest about some guy painting his nails. David Bowie, Mark Bolin, and Alice Cooper have been doing it since 1971. If they're using them for assassinations, like if they're poisonous and they're going around scratching people, then yeah, I have issues with it. Otherwise, who f***ing cares? Unless it really clashes with the color of their clothes, then call the fashion police, maybe. My wife found it very hot when I painted my nails black for Halloween. She mentions it whenever she remembers. Please tell me you did it again. I will. Old news. Punks already did this in the 70s. It screams confidence. What do you guys think about painting your nails? If you're, you know, a man. What is a movie you genuinely think should have a sequel? Not so much anymore, because of Army Hammer, but always wanted to see a sequel to The Man from Uncle. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice! Bugs Life. Gremlins 3. Either them taking over Washington, the White House, or just make it a Halloween theme like the first one is Christmas themed. The Truman Show, The Batman, and Joker. Inception. It's my favorite Nolan film. Megamind. I thought we were getting a Megamind sequel, are we not? What's a little known movie that more people should watch? Maybe it's not entirely unknown, but People Under the Stairs is an underrated classic. Mouse Hunt. 1997. Rubber it's about a tire that kills people. Gods must be crazy. It's hilarious. James and the Giant Peach. Kid-friendly, great family movie, beautifully animated, old, and original. They simply don't make them the same. Kung Fu Hustle. It's hilarious. I always recommend frequently asked questions about time travel. So good. What do you hate the most about humanity? That people who are constantly assholes or disrespectful just get away with it because that's who they are. But when Little Me breaks and has one disrespectful retort or nasty attitude, I get raked over the coals for it. We make everything so damn complicated for no legit reasons. I think there's actually not much of the humanity left now. <laughs> How long have you got? Ironically, hate itself. We're the only species on this planet that could end it. What did you have for breakfast? I think I skipped breakfast this morning. I can't, I don't remember. Usually I have an egg sandwich though with like turkey and pepper jack cheese and some whole wheat toast. I don't know. Coffee. I had a bowl of oatmeal with milk and sugar. I had toast with butter. Next time, try butter with toast. It's a game changer. Egg scramble with some bacon, tomatoes, spinach, and mushrooms. My wife is awesome. Homemade cinnamon rolls. Nothing. Air has entered the chat. Bold of you to assume that I wake up before 11.30 a.m. Breakfast is the first meal of the day, you know. The one that breaks your fast. Bold of you to assume that I fast at night. A bagel with cream cheese? In the form of a question? A croissant with a banana and some tea. What is a quote from a fictional character that has stuck with you ever since? If more of us valued food and cheer and song above hoarded gold, it would be a merrier world. Thor and Oakenshield from The Hobbit. If a lot of people love each other, the world would be a better place. Johnny. The Room. Oh, hi, Mark. I wish it need not have happened happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. That is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. No amount of money bought a second of time. Tony Stark. They like the things science gives them, but not the questions science asks. From Frankenweenie. I think it stuck with me because I heard it at such a young age. It does not do well to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Dumbledore. Of course it's all in your head, but why on earth should that have to mean it isn't real? Dumbledore. I swear by my pretty floral bonnet, I will end you. You never get a happy ending because there's always more show. Bojack Horseman. They laugh at me because I'm different. I laugh at them 
because they're all the same. Ain't no way this guy just quoted Joker. All right, I have a good one. Mine is from Silene from Pokemon Legends Arceus. It is how others choose to view you is a choice only they can make. You cannot make it for them. I think it's a really nice one and I have it saved because I think it's neat. What quote do you wish people would stop using? If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. Any of the ones attributed to Albert Einstein. The customer is always right. Different variations of the phrase, yeah, I'm a fuller, but I'm the most loyal MF you'll ever meet. As if it's a virtue to be inconsiderate head to all but a select few people. Don't be nervous. That just makes me more nervous. Well, I'm a bit over Karen. No, so here's the thing. As long as Karen still exists, we're gonna keep calling them Karens until people start respecting retail workers and fast food workers and any underpaid worker like that. They're Karens. <laughs> I don't care if you're over it or not. I did a thing. Ah, oh, the millennial anthem. I love Dr. Seuss, but if I have to see Don't Cry Because It's Over, Smile Because It Happened one more time, I'm gonna lose it. No pain, no gain. As someone into fitness, I hate hearing this, even when it's just joking around in the gym. Pain is your body saying, please stop doing this before you end up injured. What is something everyone loves, but you hate? Long phone calls. Raymond. So you're his brother. Hookups and one night stands. I don't think anyone loves hookups and one night stands. I just think it's a, it's a need that people need fulfilled. Not all people, some people, and they'll seek it out. Maybe don't be so judgmental. Social media. Sometimes I feel like a weirdo. Am I the only one that loves privacy? Myself. That TV show Friends. Olives. Same. Olives are fucking disgusting. And they're right. Olives are gross. If you like olives, comment below and tell me that I'm wrong. Say, Mason, you're wrong. Olives are good. And I will dislike that comment. What looks fun in movies, but is not fun in real life? Fighting. Movie heroes always take punches and are unscathed in the next scene, except for minor bruising. IRL, they'd be incapacitated for a few days and maybe suffer a concussion. Constant misunderstandings. Prom. Being shot at by 50 guys. Getting a taxi. The price is enough to ruin your day. Tarzan surfing on trees. Imagine the splinters I'd get myself even though I'm keen to be dynamic like him. Snakes on a plane. Going to uni. Dating. In the movies, there's a meet cute followed by a montage of fun romantic dates. Real life. Awkwardness, uncertainty, insecurity, and dread. High school. What is the worst thing you've ever had to clean up? Cow died in a pond and I had to drag it out. It had been there a few days, so it was pretty ripe. I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> That's fucking gross. Dog ran in from the garden, jumped on the bed, and vomited her breakfast plus a cat poo that she'd just eaten. Hard to describe how bad that smelled. Overflowing grease trap in a restaurant kitchen. Nasty. I used to clean public park restrooms in Texas in August. I quit to work in a sewer plant because it smelled better. Camp trash cans that had been camp trash cans that hadn't been cleaned in so long. Maggots were squirming all over them. My first job was detailing cars. We had a station wagon roll in that two large dogs had used as a doghouse, toilet, labor, and deliver room. It was a pretty solid nightmare fuel. Grease trap at a restaurant that hadn't been cleaned in two years. I vomited constantly from the smell to the point that my nose bled while wearing a respirator. Gun to your head. You can only eat one dish for the rest of your life. What is it? My answer is tomato soup. What do you guys think? Okay, hear me out. Potatoes. Uh, it might have to be a little more specific because the man with the gun to your head might just put raw potatoes in front of you. If I can only eat one thing, I'd eat the bullet. Eating is one of the, like five things that keep me going. Oh, tacos. Easy. Dat uh, uh, I don't think dat would be very nutritious. Sushi. Beat me to it. Salad, because they're extremely versatile and customizable, and you can add as much or as little of almost anything you want. Wait, the rest of my life? You're gonna shoot me once I've eaten, aren't you? Th there's no way you can hold a gun to my head for several years. I'll have a crispy deep-fried chili beef with special fry, please, since I'm gonna die anyway. Beef stew loaded with vegetables, carrots, celery, onion, green beans, potatoes, and mushrooms. You could eat them a la carte. Salmon, oven-roasted potatoes, broccoli, zucchini, peppers, sweet potatoes, and a side of avocado. What is the new American dream. To have enough money working one job to live comfortably. Current objective. Survive. Having enough money not to be stressed 24-7 about something breaking. To be able to own a home, retire before 70, and to be covered enough in a medical situation that you don't end up homeless after a routine operation. To get hit by a post truck or other government vehicle and get just injured enough to sue, but not too injured as to not be able to enjoy your payout. A less shitty America. To not have roommates. Paying rent and having enough left over for a meal. Same as it always been. Get super rich doing very little work. That's why influencer is a dream job and people invest in crazy things like crypto and NFTs. People want to hit home runs and they don't want to grind for a decent living. It's just harder to achieve now. If you can get one more season from your favorite TV show, which one would it be? Mindhunter. This is the right answer. Pushing daisies. My name is Earl. Game of Thrones. I don't want a ninth season though. I want them to have a second try at season eight. Hannibal. Community. Hey, you got a movie. Futurama. Good news, everyone. How I Met Your Mother. They need to make the last two episodes a whole season so they don't give the audience whiplash 
when they threw out everything they had previously built up. More time with Ted and his wife, and with Robin and Barney before the divorce and the death, and then have the last episode the same by the end of season 10. What's better when it's smaller? Kidney stone. Debt. Bouts of diarrhea. Tumors. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Inflation. Time spent on Reddit. Problems. <laughs> A shart. Those tiny M&Ms you get for Halloween. Oh, that's so true. The tiny M&Ms taste so much better than the regular M&Ms. If you were 22 again, what would you do differently? Go back to college sooner. Divorce much earlier. Get a good therapist and date people who have great follow through rather than lots of potential. I went backpacking through Europe when I was 20. It was what really pushed me out of my comfort zone, but also gave me a whole new perspective of how America didn't really have the monopoly on freedom. But if I was 22, I would have just graduated college and gone back to Europe and stayed there. Instead, I just worked on a couple different careers and became a hobby farmer, which I enjoy, but now really prevents me from expatriating unless I make a lot of sacrifices. Break up with my high school boyfriend and enter a different industry. Start lifting weights. Not too much. Tweak a few decisions I had made. Hey, fair enough. Stop using credit cards to buy things that I couldn't afford. What is a simple thing that makes you happy? Mine would be getting home from work and being greeted at the door by my cat. All the cat subreddits. Being told, I'm proud of you. Ice black coffee in the morning sun. Outliving an enemy. It's one of the few satisfactions of old age. Some people love to live off spite and that's okay. Hanging out with friends. Nature. A compliment means I'm doing something right. McDonald's chicken nuggets. Flowers in a nice cup of tea. If you could delete anything in this world, what would it be? War. Hate. Violence and judgment. Anyone who says people. People. Ah, he got you. He got you. My third nipple. Meg. Megatron. Religion. Your account. Thank you, Sigma Not the Press, with the Roblox Weezer profile picture. <laughs> the internet. Let's see how broad the human knowledge is when we remove it in their lives. Because I'm sure a lot of people pretend to be smart by just looking up on the internet. Because I believe that true knowledge is shown by real life practice, not search. Copy paste. Wow, this guy's really fucking annoying. <laughs> this guy's annoying. You're you're a nerd. You're fucking dweeb. Get a job. You're dating your username. How good do you have it? No, I don't want to be a furry. Tired of hearing about how much they bench press. Probably pretty bad. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I'm dating a vehicle. It's pretty queer, all right. Oh yeah. I'm in heaven. If life was a video game, then what could be some achievements? Bring joy. Make someone else smile. Achievement unlocked. Slippery slope. <laughs> yourself in public after trying to let out a silent fart. I'll start. My middle name is Danger and my first name is Dummy. <laughs> Put yourself into a near-death experience on purpose and survive. What the hell are you smoking? Yes. Emotional insight. Awareness and capacity to process emotions in a healthy manner. Achievement unlocked. You went 30 days without offending someone. Trophy. You live a boring life. Okay. <laughs> Class clown. Make a joke everyone will remember. For the depressed, you've brushed your teeth. Tax god. Do your taxes without making a mistake or paying anyone to do it for you. What's a fact that some people just can't accept? Science doesn't care what you believe. That life isn't supposed to be fair and that equality of opportunity and equality of outcome are not the same. Facts aren't opinions. Not everyone that disagrees with them is an evil person trying to push some malevolent agenda. You can do the best, not make mistakes, and still lose. Life isn't fair. You can and will be wrong. Being part of the alphabet mafia doesn't actually make you a better person. You can be gay, trans, bi, whatever, and be a piece of... I'm gay and agree. You've been gay certified. The term alphabet mafia is conspiratorial and derogatory. It seems a little cucked to agree with him, TBH, but I like your positivity. Yeah, some doesn't, <laughs> some doesn't feel right here. That we are the same humans as Sumerians, Romans, and all the people who were alive thousand years ago. It doesn't matter if it's 2022 or 7,000 BC. That their choices have more impact on their life than they are willing to admit. People who ride ridiculously loud motorcycles on purpose, why? I'm far more interested in hearing from people who accidentally ride ridiculously loud motorcycles motorcycles. Their story should be a doozy. There's a South Park episode that addresses this question. I know which one you're talking about. I wish I knew, so I'd maybe have a reason to be empathetic to my neighbor that wakes my kids up at least four times a week revving his super cool bike to take off at 20 miles per hour on a quiet residential street. Motorcycles are a bit like alcohol. It's fun to be drunk. It's not fun to be sober around drunks. Look at me! Look at me! I'm important! I was into loud car audio, and I was in an immature asshole. I wish I could apologize. Loud motorcycle guy is like a toddler that walks around banging pants together. What is a minor inconvenience that instantly pisses you off? When I go to a web page, but it doesn't load all at once, so when you go to click something, the page shifts as other things load in, and you end up clicking the wrong thing. When this happens, I can feel my body physically reeling from the anger and stress. People standing in doorways, especially people standing in groups having conversations in doorways. Get the hell out of the way already. People's lack of awareness of others really astounds me. When you bite your tongue or cheek while eating, and then suddenly that one particular spot becomes like a magnet, attracting your teeth to it, and you keep biting it. When a ballpoint pen doesn't work when it clearly has ink in it, it is 
one job when the people walking in front of me are really slow, but also spread out so you can't walk past them. Ads that try to hide the X button by putting something white where the button is. Forgot password? Ah, enters new password. New password can't be the same as the old password. Ads in the middle of videos. Ads that block the paragraph I just started reading. Ads that are made to look like normal content. Ads. The incorrect autocorrect. When the cord for my headphones catches on something and they're yanked for my ears. Just get Bluetooth headphones. Silly. Silly Billy. Struggling to get clothes off for whatever reason. Makes me panic and see red. Sports bra plus sweaty body equals panic. And having an itch on the bottom of your foot but wearing shoes? That's brutal. Especially while driving. You become emperor of the world and everybody has to obey you. What do you do first? Tell everyone to chill the f*** out. Execute order 66, of course. Put somebody else in charge and take a week off. In Australia, we call that the Scott Morrison approach. Not without a trip to Hawaii while the country is burning. The ScoMo No Show. I just realized if I had this power, most people wouldn't remember me as a nice person. First act. No matter what I do, you must remember me as a nice person. Hey, that solves a lot of problems there. Get Google to teach the maps lady how to pronounce Welsh locations. I did the Australian accent on my GPS and hearing her pronounce the names of places where I live that are indigenous American in origin is interesting. Play the world's largest game of Simon Says. Losers get dragged to hell, but if you win, you get a medal. A medal? Count me in! Build a huge mansion on a private island. Then I would get to the boring stuff like world beasts. Personal peace is very important to take wise decisions. Every item of clothing must have at least two pockets. I'm emperor of the world. I shout if I want. Two pockets on each sock will be weird. Pyramids. That's definitely top prio for every great ruler. Pyramid schemes or pyramid to keep your dead body? Eh, probably both. Bro, think of the pyramid we could build today. You know how we can look back and wonder how the pyramids were built with the tech and power available then? What can we build today that would baffle future observers? What's the most gatekeepy opinion that you hold? A lot of people in the comments don't know what gatekeep means. Stop gatekeeping gatekeeping. Stop gatekeeping people from gatekeeping gatekeeping. For travelers, if you didn't leave the airport and spend at least one day in the country, you didn't visit the place. I'm not telling you. Three wheelers and slingshots are not motorcycles. Don't talk about how great your country is if you haven't spent some time abroad. My country is the greatest in the world. Guy who's never left his zip code. Cruises and all-inclusive hotels do not count. If you want to design tabletop RPGs, you need to play more than just D&D. The gate at my workplace is for deliveries only. You're not a foodie if you only like to eat five things and pick half the stuff in every dish before you eat it. Also, you need to cook or else you really don't understand food and all the processes that can go into making something. If you can't even cook basic stuff and haven't bothered to try much of anything, your food opinions don't matter. It's so petty and I hate myself for it, but when someone sits down at the piano and pounds out either chopsticks or fur elise, my soul dies. Yeah, that's why you gotta play Undertale music, like like the Sands Battle or, or the Ronbu music, the whatever it's called, F Falling Down, Falling Down. Those ones, you'll get a hit with gamers and non-gamers alike. You shouldn't wear band t-shirts if you don't know the band. The original gatekeeping. What is wrong with society today? Social media. They're taking the bait and embrace the infighting rather than making meaningful change by collectively directing their anger at people who've been f***ing them for years with no Vaseline. Poor public education. We are too focused on what everybody else is doing instead of caring for our natural world. Unwillingness to listen. Yeah, this. Also an unwillingness to listen. Lack of kindness. Encouragement of cruelty, whether severe or it was just a prank, bro. Laughs maniacally while swinging fists. It's just a prank, bro. Just a prank. Why you mad, bro? Jeez, <laughs> lighten up. I hate this kind of thinking. Pranks are supposed to be lighthearted, not detrimental to someone's health. We are more concerned about Instagram likes than actual problems. This feels like a shallow dig. People just don't feel empowered to face the actual problems because the system in place obfuscate it. Bad public education leading to people being more susceptible to bullshit and propaganda on the internet and TV. I 100% agree. People not developing the ability to critically think and form a rational and logical idea on an issue or topic is a serious problem. Makes it so easy to manipulate and abuse. People aren't wearing enough hats for sun protection or just style. McDonald's doesn't serve breakfast all day. In Canada, they do. That moment when people started lifting up their phones to film tragedy instead of stepping in to help. Whatever caused that, that's what's wrong. Lack of love. What's a small act of kindness that literally anyone can do and practice every day? Be aware of your surroundings and don't block entrances, exits, hallways, etc. Not act on road rage. Just let the moment pass. Patience. You never know what someone else is going through. Could be a breakup, their dog just died, granny finally made it to heaven, or maybe mom just broke the news that she's got end-stage cervical cancer and has weeks left to live. You never know, so be patient. After all, wouldn't you want someone to be patient with you? I really enjoy letting people with less items go ahead of me at checkout in the grocery store. The look 
look on their face when I signal for them to get in front of me makes it worth waiting a little longer. Hold doors open for people. I've always done it. Ask people how they are, then pay attention and listen. Their life is important as yours, and you might just learn something. Assume anyone you've had a bad interaction with is a good person who's just having a bad day. Be nice to retail and customer service employees. Just let each other merge in traffic and stop trying to race to the front of the line. It's not that hard. You can actually cost a 20 minute backup by causing one person to break hard and disrupt the flow. What food is total garbage if you reheat it in the microwave? Anything with red sauce in it, for sure. Fries. They need that dry heat of an air fryer. Soggy microwave fries are the worst. They taste like sadness. Anything with lettuce. I always want to get it on my sandwich, but sucks in the fridge. Ugh, the nasty hot lettuce is the worst. To school bullies, why did you do it and do you regret it? Man, I hope this blows up. I need answers. And me too, buddy. Just ask my oldest, 19M. He was a horrible bully, especially his little brother. I did everything I could think of to correct this behavior, but his father's endlessly encouraging of it. He said he said because I was super jealous, dude. They got to be weird, but I couldn't because dad would hate me. He has embraced his weird, thank God. Unfortunately, he does admit that he doesn't really regret it. I faced a lot of abuse. It doesn't make what I did right, but I regret it every single day. I wish I could track down the people I bullied and apologize. I try to all the time, but I can't find them. I didn't realize I was. I thought by asking questions I was showing interest, not shaming. I thought by sharing similar stories I was relating, but not one-upping. That was the only language I was taught to speak. I did not come to understand what it meant to others until I was much older. I was bullied, so I bullied others. Me being bullied made me feel bad, so to prop myself up, I bullied weaker ones. I didn't need to be the strongest person in school, but I also didn't want to be the weakest. Is the right train of thought. Nope, but I was 13. I was a bully short term. After my parents got divorced when I was nine, I just didn't understand my feelings. I started acting out, looking for a place to fit in. I got to hanging around the rougher kids and just started bullying this one kid for no reason for years until we moved away. I went quickly from bullying to being bullied. I went from fighting because I wanted to to fighting because I had to. I got tired of it real quick. It managed to calm my ass down and after my stepdad, he was an abusive drunk, finally went to prison. It was as if all the violence in me went with him. My grades improved. I had a really good girlfriend almost all the way through high school. Attendance was up, worked on an after school job and went to church every Wednesday and twice on Sunday. I mostly blame my stepdad for behavior as they say, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, I absolutely regret it. I used to bully the bullies. Aside from them, I was a friendly person and got along with like 90% of my year level. I don't regret having cracks at these guys, but there are individual incidents that I regret when I took it too far. I wanted to make everyone else feel as powerless and frustrated and angry as I was. Oh my God, that was so negative. Holy moly. What is your best insult? I'm jealous of people who don't know you. You're so hard to underestimate. Call anyone. <laughs> Call anyone forehead and watch them break. I love how we went from regretting bullying stories to being heads to people. That's so mean. I'm not as stupid as you look. I'm a fan of, I've been called worse things by better people. All those nasty insecurities you have about yourself are true. If you had an intelligent thought in your head, it died a loneliness. The only way a woman would interact with you is with a taser. I'm sorry, who are you? I lack the appropriate color crayons to explain this to you. The best part of you ran down the crack of your mother's Women have read it. What are things men do that make them ghostable? I'm taking notes, ladies. I met a guy at a bar once. He seemed like a nice guy and we exchanged numbers. The following week, he asked me out. I told him I couldn't that night, but I was free tomorrow. Why? He asked. I told him I had a funeral tomorrow morning and just didn't feel like going out. What time is the funeral? He said. I won't stay too long. Please, I really want to see you. He wouldn't take no for an answer and to me, that is a huge red flag. I ghosted him after that. Send unsolicited nudes and still have the audacity to ask if I want some of it. Not respecting boundaries. Instant no. So picking you up on Tuesday? Someone that doesn't try to maintain a conversation with you. Like you're basically talking to yourself. When they die and start floating around the house moaning spookily, rattling chains, and opening and closing doors. Two girls with a cool hippie van and talking dog would absolutely disagree. Creepy messages or creepy in-person behavior like coming on too strong. I'd rather block you than risk my safety or be accused of leading you on. Sending a message, then two minutes later sending question marks, then a couple more minutes later sending hello? Bye bitch lol? Which cartoon character becomes more relatable the older you get? The obvious one Squidward, Tom from Tom and Jerry. Stew Pickles making pudding at 4 a.m. You've lost control of your life. Homer Simpson, I have three kids and no money. Why can't I have no kids and three money? Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. F off, uninvited guests. You tell him, Rabbit. That dude from the B movie. I'd be upset too if some girl ditches me for a B. The Grinch. Megatron. Shut up, Meg. Garfield. I feel like people are, are uh, conditioned to hate Mondays at an early age now. Donald Duck. Always pissed off? I get it now. All those women who smack Johnny Bravo with their purse. Yeah, isn't it crazy?
crazy how like an entire show about harassing women is just like a like a staple in, a, in American older Americans. Crazy. Charlie Brown. Hell, I was fully identifying with him when I was nine, and the strip was still current. What gives you faith in humanity? Just day to day life and interaction. Based on my experience, I honestly believe that most people are just people who are generally good natured towards others and have some form of human decency. Don't get me wrong, there are some truly shitty things going on, but there is also kindness too. That good ideas never die. Once humanity gets a hold of an idea like all men are created equal, it will never go away. Didn't make everyone equal overnight, we're still working on that. Thus, we progress, little by little. As fallen angels, we suck, but as rising apes, we're kinda killing it. R slash made me smile. There are still good people in this world, making others happy with acts of kindness, big or small. The man who helped me put on my spare tire. Everyone else honked at me and passed me, but not this guy. He even went back to his apartment to get his jack and then helped me. Thanks, Philip. I still meet good people and see good deeds done on a daily basis. Small children who haven't yet been corrupted by the shit of the world, being happy and carefree. Men who are curious about breasts. What questions do you want answered? Were backpacks ever useful like counterweights? I know it's so stupid, but freshman me had this question going on. Only if by counterweight you mean even more crushing weight on your shoulders? What effects does a period have on them? It makes them sore. Does it hurt if I hug back tightly when a woman hugs me? It can do. Depends on the individual, of course, but there are differing levels of sensitivity and hormones. Can make them uncomfortable, icky, painful without tight hugs. Do women also have random nipple erections in public? Oh yes, another reason padded bras exist. Why don't we have padded underwear for public boners? Does it get uncomfortable when you sleep on your stomach? Sometimes you can get a pillow just right so it's comfy. 99% of the time, either a nip gets mad, it's getting squished, or the lower back starts aching due to the angle. Boner here. Please tell us if you feel something that feels off. Women can get breast cancer as early as their 20s and an extra pair of hands will be helpful. Signed, a breast cancer fighter whose ex told her that he felt something but didn't tell her because he didn't want to freak me out. When you are breastfeeding and have to pump, does it feel like a full bladder having to pee but in your breast or does it just fill up and you pump whenever? Also, do y'all do weird things to them when you're bored? <laughs> the fucking double whammy. Holy moly. For me, it wasn't like I needed to pee. First, there would be some leaking and then it would feel almost like pressure and then they would get hard and painful. If I didn't pump every two hours, they would become hard like concrete, to the point my skin would start looking shiny because the skin was stretching, but not like peeing in the least bit. More like a pressure or muscle cramp. Do you store anything in between them? <laughs> Look mate, women's clothes rarely have decent pockets and sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Well, I learned a lot today. <laughs> this is so fun. What are some myths that people still believe? That bubblegum stays in your body for seven years if you swallow it. it. It doesn't. It Guys, come on. It's actually 17 years. My dad had this guy helping him out. Think big box store DIY curve ready helper who told him if you sleep with your hair wet you will bleed out of your mouth and he was 100% sure that was a fact we were both just confused and bewildered at this statement what the hell had this guy witnessed his mom was sick of wet pillows that and made that up lie detectors as a literal thing there's a reason they aren't dismissible as evidence in court in most places you have to wait 48 hours to report someone missing people are saying 48 hours now good lord no do it immediately guys come on my mom always tells me to never mix milk and fish since that would poison me same goes to sleeping with socks in bed it makes people blind, according to her. I still believe that if any of my limbs hang off the bed while sleeping, that a monster will grab them. Also believe that the moment I remember this and pull them back on the bed is just in the nick of time before a monster grabs them. You can't prove that there isn't a monster under my bed. For far too long, I sincerely believe that if you eat an apple seed, a tree may begin to grow inside of you. That you should pee on a jellyfish sting for relief. Please don't do that. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Yes, it does. That's the entire reason for lightning rods on buildings. Diamonds being rare gems. That you must wait at least 30 minutes minutes after eating before going swimming. Otherwise, you could develop deadly cramps that lead to drowning. This was made to keep kids from throwing up in pools. I'd bet money on it. Or to give the parents a break to finish their meals before going back to full supervision mode. The one about you're supposed to buy an engagement ring worth three months of your pays. Idiots still falling for a PR ad campaign from the 1920s, or maybe it was the 30s. Doesn't matter, it's ridiculous. You can make one thing 5% bigger. What do you choose? <laughs> hey, I, I, think, I think we all know the answer for some of us. <laughs> well, I was born with one arm shorter than the other, so naturally, I'd wish for a bigger d- <laughs> There it is. Everyone's patience. The X button in mobile ads. My parents' lifespan. My love for myself. It's lacking, and I could use the boost. You're doing great, dude man last name. The density of hair on my noggin. The earth, just to see what happens. Suddenly, more earth. 
It's free real estate. The right foot on everyone in the world. Not everyone would notice, but it would mess with the minds of those that did just enough. Population count of endangered species. Monkey's paw. 5% more animals are added to the endangered species list. Monkey's paw, but helpful. All those are mosquito species. You know what? Let's make the sun 5% bigger. I want to see what happens. Instant death. Huh. Neat. Hey, I'm ready. I I've lived a good life, all right? The amount of good in everyone. My salary. Antarctica. Cool everything the f*** down. What is the biggest scam in today's society? Ticketmaster charging a $30 processing fee for a $50 ticket. Textbook access codes you get after buying a new textbook and it can only use once. Insider trading in Congress. Fitness advice by influences whose only goal is peddling their products. Working 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and still being broke. Um, you just actually just need to stop spending so much money, you stupid millennial. Uh, maybe you stop buying so much avocado toast and maybe you'll be able to buy a house in 25 years. <laughs> it's easy as that. Just stop spending so much money. Capital some bullshit. Needing a degree for an entry level low paying job. Annual raises are lower than annual inflation. 10 hot dogs, 8 buns. What's the best response to an ex who says, I miss you. This is the reason I left you because you keep entertaining your exes. Depends on whether they were decent or did me dirty. How is this the only comment of hundreds so far saying it depends? Like holy sh**. You'd think every relationship in the world had one person f over the other who is now trying to hurt them more if the comments in this thread were to be taken seriously. Understandable. Have a nice day. Probably the only good response. Give them the old Han Solo and reply, I know. No response. Message read. Sorry, who is this? We dated? Can you be more specific? We went to Paris together? Can you be more specific? But your aim is getting better. I read that in Grunkle Stan's voice, lol. Listen, I'm I'm no Alex Hirsch, so of course that was bad. It's okay, it'll pass. Fleabag. If I didn't know that was the name of the TV show, I would be like, damn, that's rude. I don't. Good decision. Hello there, the angel from my nightmares, the shadow in the background of the morgue. I'm no musician, but those sound like good lyrics. What is a cool way to say, I'm a virgin? I've fended off every person that has attempted to bed me. Sadly, no attempts were made. I'm a stranger to love. I don't know the rules. Ooh, that is kind of slick. Of course I haven't lost my virginity. I never lose. Unashamedly. Yeah, I mean, if you're just out there like Spongebob screaming, I'm a virgin. Eh, that's pretty cool. I have not f***ed around and consequently have yet to find out. I'm an active member of the Reddit community. No, no, no. The question said how to say it cool. I am beyond worldly desires with a wink and finger guns. I mean, if you use finger guns anyways, that's already pretty Pretty cool. What is something you will never do again? Attempt to pick up a wild snake. Well, yeah, that was your first mistake. Get back on Facebook. Don't do it. <laughs> it's, it's not worth it. Cosign a loan. Well, it depends the situation. Are you the parent of the person who's getting the loan or are you just a friend? Go back to prison. I made a vow with myself that I would never go back because of what happened to me there. I kept my vow because it's been over 40 years since I got out and I haven't been back since. Well, hey, congrats on not getting back in jail. Share a house with a lazy person. Look, it's not that I'm lazy. I just see the dishes and I'm like, mm, I don't want to do that right now. Work retail. The ways my mental health suffered was just not worth it. The worst part of retail is that every customer believes the customer is always right. So that means treat the employees like absolute trash. I had COVID all week, which dulled my senses quite a bit. So my tolerance for spicy food was massively increased as a result. I decided to test my limits, eventually working my way up to the score scorpion peppers I've been growing. Much to my delight, this one million Scoville pepper wasn't that bad. The reason I'll never do it again, however, is because, well, let's just say these peppers burn twice. Once on the way in and once on the way out. Ah, yes, you experienced the Johnny Cash. Ye ol' ring of fire. Tell people about my future plans or goals. I guess I understand that, but I don't know. Open marriage insisted upon our therapist. Let me guess, the therapist had sex with your spouse? Sounds like a great Great plot. If you became a god for exactly one hour, what's the first thing you're doing? I think that depends on what powers I have as a god. Because we're not the god, we are a god. Cure everyone's chronic pain. My fibromyalgia and I would cast off agnosticism for you. Smiting. Lots and lots of smiting. I would ask Reddit what to do. Delete the gym. Hit the lawyer. Facebook up. Probably an anxiety attack from the sudden responsibility. Bring my Labrador back for one more glorious walk on the beach. A little selfish, but I understand. Switch it off and on again. What's the worst that could happen, really? I would make it so all food was as healthy 
for you as vegetables while keeping its respective taste. I don't think I've ever seen an answer like this before, and it is so good. Implement karma. Help someone cross the street? You get all the green lights on your way home, bro. Cut in line? Sorry, they ran out of that thing you wanted. Get rid of my son's autism so I can hear him actually talk and speak, even if it's for one hour. I just want to know what his voice sounds like and what he would have to say. I want to hear him say I love you, mom. Tell me how he's feeling and what his favorite color is. Calling Aphrodite? What are you going to do with the other 58 minutes? What are some important facts that people seem to ignore if a zombie apocalypse ever happened? If you're dependent on meds to keep you going, you'll probably be the first to go. It's unfortunate, but it is true, kinda. Tennis elbow. You hit a human skull with a machete, you're going to get a repetitive stress injury. A lot of people seem to forget every facet of survival that doesn't involve killing zombies. Like, can you produce textiles? So, know how to preserve food? If not, you're gonna freeze and starve before the zombies get ya. How hard it would be for the average person to even try to kill one. Everyone loves to think, oh, I'd kill a million zombies, but when you're face to face with a real zombie who looks like a person, I don't think you're gonna be so confident. Gas goes bad and the rubber gaskets and cars rot. That it would be over in about six months. Decomposition is a thing. Islands. Seriously, all you need to do is go to a remote island or low populated island, only accessible by boat or rarely by plane, and you'll be much safer. Do you think zombies have the brain power, let alone energy, strength, and knowledge of how to swim or operate a boat? Well, it depends on what the zombie apocalypse situation is. If it's Resident Evil, you're screwed. If it's anything else, maybe. You are almost certainly not as good of a shot as you think you are. I went to a shooting range once, and I, <laughs> I missed so much. What is the opposite of your username? Confused Coyote said, focused roadrunner, probably. Oh, I see what you did there, you Looney Tunes weirdo. Lost in a dream said, found in a nightmare. I think that's equally as cool. Taco Bell 69. Healthy solid poops 96. Live like it's Tuesday said, die like it's Wednesday. Yeah, fair enough. But it's true said, Facebook memes. Nebula Ninja said, black hole pirate is funny, lol. Same. I, I don't get what is funny is saying. Forever useless said, temporarily useful. You're not wrong. Brief moments said, boxers permanently. Whoa, what a great day said, damn, what a <laughs> day. I can't even think of what my username backwards would be other than like brandy dicks. I don't know. <laughs> what is the eeriest slash most depressing town or city in the world? Norilsk. It is in Russia and basically a giant apartment complex. No green, only concrete. No green, only concrete sounds like a very Russian thing thing to say. Mansfield, Ohio. Geographic wonder is the only hole above ground. Mansfield in England is also a hole, LMAO. I once accidentally drove into this American town called East St. Louis and never saw any place that bad ever since. And you made it out without a robbery? No, I didn't get robbed. Probably because I got out of there as fast as I could. I only ended up in East St. Louis because this was before GPS and I got lost trying to get to a place in Belleville. I'm not from St. Louis or its area and the highways confused me. Pyongyang is half theater production, half ghost town. Most of it is empty and the few businesses that are actually open are only there for appearances and to occasionally serve important visitors. Gary, Indiana usually ranks pretty high. In Indiana, saying go to Gary is a significant insult. Norilsk, Russia. Look it up. It's terrible. Detroit looked like an episode of The Walking Dead when I was there eight years ago. I don't know how it's doing now. Americans have read it. What is something the rest of the world needs to hear? Animals in Yellowstone will kill you. Edit. Thank you everyone for the gifts. Me, 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 me. When we ask for ice, they give us a full cup. Water should always be free at restaurants. 27 U.S. states are actually farther north than the southernmost point of Canada. Some of us do know our geography. Without practical and regular use, learning a second language is extremely difficult. What do you count as a masterpiece? Movie, TV, book, etc.? Why? Tetris. Why? Because it has literally zero fat on it. You couldn't even try improve upon it. You just add more fat to it. I I love a complex, mind-blowing masterpiece, but nothing gets me more than a, oh my god, this is so simple and yet incredible.
Rumble. Portal 2, video game. The first was groundbreaking, but the sequel took the basic idea and just ran wild with it. The mechanics of the game, complemented by the story and the writing, was top-notch. Absolute masterclass in video game production. While the ending of Portal 2 is a pretty good closeout of it, I really hope that they're secretly making a third, but we all know Valve can't count to three. True Detective Season 1. Some of the best dialogue slash interactions between the protagonists shot brilliantly, and it's one of the most atmospheric shows I've ever seen. I really can't say enough good things about it. Holes. It may sound silly, but literally everything ties together, no matter how small the detail. The Wire. It's a show that still resonates today, even when dealing in issues from 20 years ago. Anyone who's grown up in or around poverty can find a character to relate to, and each season is its own story. Gravity Falls. Watching through it as an adult and following along with all the details of the journals and the ciphers was a great time. Over the Garden Wall is another great watch for Halloween time. Oh, Over the Garden Wall's so good. I just rewatched it and oh, just the whole vibe, the aesthetic, oh. Spirited Away. The story, the animation, everything about this movie is good. I may be a little biased since I watched it when I was young, so there's some nostalgia with it, but it's still really good. Every Ghibli work is masterpiece. I like all of them. Hasn't been one I disliked. Bad grammar aside, they are correct. Every Ghibli movie is so masterfully done. I consider To Kill a Mockingbird a masterpiece. Both the book and the movie. The reason why is because it wasn't afraid to show the racial injustices of the South. Not to mention, Gregory Peck is a phenomenal actor and I could not see anyone else playing Atticus. WALL-E. It shows what will happen if mankind became overly reliant on technology up to the point that it will destroy nature without us realizing it. As a kid, I already feel like it will happen at some point in time, and I realize how accurate it will be, and behold, it's slowly unfolding before our eyes today. Anyways, I consider this movie a masterpiece. I also somehow dream of creating a real-life Wally robot that really collects and sorts garbages one day as a kid, but yeah, I think I'll give up on that. There are other ways. <laughs> What's normal at 3 a.m. and terrifying at 3 p.m.? Dead silence. Yeah, I guess that would be pretty spooky during the day. Ghosts. I think I'd be more concerned to see them during the day because I feel like they would just be in charge of my house at that point, waking up and not knowing where I am. That's just a normal nap. Still terrifying at 3 a.m., lol. What's something that's considered normal that creeps you out immediately? Family channels. Imagine having to live your entire life on camera with little to no privacy without being able to consent for it. Also, to my knowledge, there are no current laws that protect child influencers' income like child actors have. If your content can't exist without your child, it's their job, not yours. Advertising. Especially target advertising. The constant attempt to manipulate you psychologically to make you believe you need something that's only a want. Creepy AF. Tickling that doesn't stop at the victim's request. Oh yeah, that's just really uncomfortable. When people come to your door and knock or ring the bell and then peer in the window. Oh god, yeah, that's so... Uh, just don't look in the house, come on. Open door policies and families. My in-laws just walk in whenever they want and I hate it. I get it if you're direct family and you've done it forever, but if you're in-laws, then you need to establish new rules. People making Instagrams for their babies and making captions as if the baby were writing it. Every company creating an ecosystem requiring my home address and credit card and my birthday just to listen to some music or use some software. Not a shred of my identity is unsold at this point. Beauty pageants for young kids. God, I always think about those and how... What is Honey Boo Boo doing now? Huh? Like, are they okay? When people refer to kids slash babies as flirting when they are just being playful. Yeah, knock it off. That's just creepy. You're applying these things to people who can't think yet. What's the biggest mistake you've watched someone make in their personal life? Must be my disabled brother who fell for an internet scam. He met a woman online. She lived in a different continent, but he was certain she was the love of his life. Spent over a year chatting and emailing her and helping her with money from time to time. Very fishy stuff stuff, but he refused to listen to my skepticism. It ended when he had saved up enough money to go visit her. He went, came back two days later, and refused to ever admit what had happened. Went to his grave without ever talking about it. Second place goes to my father, who cheered him on. He wasn't sure whether it was a scam or not, but he thought it was nice that my brother had hopes and dreams. My parents adopted an at-risk teen while their marriage was falling apart. It was a train wreck. My brother ran for public office without having an agenda. He had no leadership qualities qualifications, background in position, or support from anyone in the community. He's took out a 10k personal loan
loan to finance his political run and held one fundraiser where most of the attendees were family and couldn't vote for him. He lost badly, coming in last behind four other candidates. It took him years to pay back the loan and refill his savings, which he completely drained to pay for a signage and flyers. Saddest of all, the printer misspelled his name on both items, so any remnant is a harsh reminder of how badly things went. I mean, at least he went out there and tried. Waste their entire inheritance on drugs. My uncle got himself a mistress, lent her $10,000 he never got back, and lost his job defending her at work. Wife served him divorce papers short afterwards. He gave up his house to his wife, so he ended up jobless and homeless, sleeping on our couch at the ripe age of 60. Single mother of three living in poverty, gave her parents her $6,000 tax refund to hold on to because she didn't want her abusive ex to convince her to split it with him. Parents spent it all in weeks. Oh my god, that's so awful. Being passive and just letting everything happen to him. He wasn't sure if he wanted kids or not, but his girlfriend did. So they had sex without condoms. She got pregnant with twins. He looked absolutely miserable. Similar things happened to him involving housing. His family convinced him to put the parent's mortgage in his name. Things got messy. Don't just let things happen to you. My friend chose to have a child with a man who had cheated on her multiple times while still in high school. No, no, come on. What is the worst candy? For me, it's black licorice. I, it's just the taste is so gross. When they changed the crunch bar recipe, that was a crime against humanity. My mom dips black licorice in baking soda. Unfun dip. Is your mom okay? That's not like a human thing to do. The off-brand Walgreens brand chocolate you get around Easter. It tastes chalky and like it was sweetened with Splenda. Not sure what it is, but there is a whole f***ing bowl at my grandma's house. They were fun, but waxed lips. They were big, red, and made out of wax. Some even had vampire teeth. Thrills gum. No, I don't want my gum to taste like soap. Jelly Belly Bean Boozled. Ain't nothing like barf and rotten egg flavored beans. You guys know those fake M&Ms that come in those candy canes? God, I hate those things. Blood flavored beans in jelly bean roulette. Taste very strongly of iron. The thought makes me start gagging now. Musk flavored anything. Stuff is cologne, not candy. You're about to make some Australians very upset. Once again, it's very good that they don't exist, am I right? <laughs> what is the weirdest rumor you heard about yourself? That I was dead. I got in a bad car wreck in high school and an off-duty nurse was first on the scene. She happened to have a white blanket to cover me up with because I was laying on the ground and it was cold. A classmate drove by and saw my car and a body under a white blanket. I missed the next day of school because I was too sore. When I came in the day after that, everyone gasped and said they heard I had died in a car wreck. Eh, that's definitely an interesting one. I killed my mother. This went around in high school, while I was in high school. Like somehow I was going to be there in class with them if they were remotely true. It kept me from getting bullied though. FYI, I called my mom yesterday and sang happy birthday to her. So, bit insane considering you've killed her. Somebody spread a rumor that I purposefully gave their cat acid by making out with the cat while I had acid on my tongue. They claim their cat has never been the same. I have never French kissed a cat and I would never risk poisoning an animal. I think that person just doesn't like you. That I had six toes, not on one foot, but in total. Sloth looking ass. In school in Ireland, a girl asked her ex about me because we were in the same class, and in a bid to put her off, he told her that I was French, that I wrote poetry, I paid chess, and being half English, I ate crumpets all the time. She still dated me, and it made for a very interesting conversation on our first date, so it kind of backfired on him. What emo teen wouldn't want to date a French guy who writes poems? For real, it sounded like he was just setting you up. That I was breeding octopuses for their ink to use in my printer. Spread it myself though as a joke in school, but it caught on and the whole year below me believed it and even asked about it to my friends. Been a while ago, but still makes me chuckle. It was a squid. Yeah, that's the only lie there. He wasn't breeding octopus, he was breeding squid. That I had a secret twin sister living in another country. Not at all true. That I was a criminal with a warrant and needed to be in jail. Then the cops showed up because, lo and behold, in the paper there was
there was a person who looked f***ing exactly like me with a warrant. Got cleared up real fast, but damn, if I don't have a near identical twin jackass out there. What's the most totally overrated classic rock artist slash band? So many people picking 90s bands as classic rock. Thanks for making me feel super old. You're welcome. Kiss getting wrecked in the comments. I really hope Gene Simmons finds this thread. Gene Simmons have literally been told all this since they started. He also doesn't care at all. He acknowledges that the band is basically a reason to sell loads of merch and it's all about the money. That one that you like so much. You take that back. I cannot believe this comment. Unforgivable. You don't know what they mean to me. Kiss. Truthfully, I don't think I can name a single Kiss song. Man, this thread is making me feel like an idiot for liking Kiss, lol. They really helped inspire my guitar playing as a teen like 12 years ago. In this thread, Kiss. Lots of Kiss. I literally only know them for the face paint and the tongue. That's it. I don't know any songs. Kiss. They had maybe three decent songs and one of them was Beth. They were all about the makeup and stage effects. Not so great music. Kiss. They got great marketing, but music isn't that amazing. Not bad, just not that good, I think. Damn, people really hate Kiss, huh? Which singer is instantly recognized by their vocal style? Not their lyrics, just their voice. Louis Armstrong. Oh, 100%. He, he's always singing about like, what a wonderful world. Kermit the Frog. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? That, that's the best you got from me, baby. Michael Jackson. All you have to do to emulate Michael Jackson is just give a quick hee hee and uh. Shimona. Ow! Johnny Cash. I only know a few songs, so I'm not sure if I'd be able to recognize them easily. DMX. Well, you know what they say. X is gonna give it to you. Elvis. Can we all admit that we really don't care about Elvis too much? Janis Joplin. Nina Simone. Birds flying high. You know how I feel. Leonard Cohen. Gonna be honest, I don't know a lot of these people. What is something people brag about that signals a red flag? I had a coworker tell me that she drives great drunk. How easily they can manipulate people, or how good they are at lying. Most people I've come across that boast about being good people are actually massive pieces of shit. How overprotective their partner is never ends well. I worked with a guy who bragged about being in prison for most of his life, and somehow everyone was stupid to him. I don't know if this makes sense, but when someone tries to one-up your struggles, it's not only annoying, but a huge red flag. If I said I didn't get a lot of sleep, they would be like, oh, that's crazy. I got five seconds of sleep while being dangled over a fireproof alligator pit filled with lava from a fishing line. It just shows that they will literally never be there for you and make every conversation about themselves. When their entire lives revolve around banging, it's not my fault I'm a carpenter, or a drummer, or a crip. Money. Any actual rich person will usually rather try to be more low-key to avoid people using them. Working too much. It's not a bad thing, but for me, it's a red flag in any relationship. I don't live for the hustle and people who think it's impressive they work 60 to 70 hours a week because they have important work to do are free to do as they please, but get a big I'll pass, especially if it's on a date. I used to work 60 to 70 hours a week and there's nothing to brag about. It's like Stockholm Syndrome for a job. I'm just blunt and tell it like it is. Translates to, I'm just an abrasive asshole who finds every opportunity to bring people down. What is something that happens to all of us, but no one ever talks about it? Tripping on the sidewalk and hoping no one noticed, lol. Weird unexplained heart flutters or chest pain that makes you ask yourself, is this what a heart attack feels like? I just think to myself, well, this is it. It's been a hell of a ride, y'all. And then the couple seconds pass and you're like, oh, okay, I'm good. That moment when it truly hits home that you're not young anymore and there's nothing you can do to stop the decline. Intrusive thoughts. Them bastards really be annoying. Yes, as a clinician, it is wild how many people come in and are so ashamed and genuinely think they are awful, horrible people for having intrusive thoughts. It's so upsetting for them. Definitely needs to be discussed more. Your pubes go gray. At that point, I'm just gonna be hairless. Getting that occasional snot out of your nose that's so big it feels like it's taking a part of your brain out with it. Cringy, soul-scratching flashbacks that you can physically feel. When you wanna know what time it is, so you look at your watch or phone, but when you put it down, you realize you didn't actually synthesize the information, so you have to look again. But then, 10 seconds later, you realize you still don't know the time, so you have to look again. Then maybe a minute later, someone asks you what time it is and you realize you actually have to look at your phone a fourth goddamn time. This is me checking my cards
cards at poker or looking for snacks in the fridge. Look, it's always on the fourth or fifth look that something will appear. Parents getting old. You don't think about it or talk about it until it really hits one day. When you flush, but it doesn't flush all the poo, so you have to flush again. What is that? I'm so sick of, like, the embarrassing second flush. It's like, I didn't take a monster sh okay? I'm normal. What are the worst ways to die? Rabies. If you want to be terrified, look up the progress of your death if you get infected and start showing symptoms. It's still insane that we haven't figured out how to cure rabies, even in the later stages. Getting stuck? Cave diving. You couldn't pay me to go spelunking. A lot of the things listed are terrible, of course, but you would rarely, if ever, see some of them. But as a hospital physician, I all too often have to watch people, usually smokers, with decimated lungs die a fear-ridden, dread-filled death. Not being able to catch a simple breath, and you can see the terror in their eyes as they know they are probably not leaving that hospital alive. Being skinned alive. Yeah, that doesn't sound too great. Starving to death, severe hypothermia, or death by exposure. Just terrible and how prolonged your pain is. I used to do volunteer cadaver recovery, and the worst thing I saw was a person who fell and broke their hip and pelvis in the woods and literally dragged himself for half a mile before he died. It looked like he survived for several days and expired via thirst and starvation and exposure. The investigators concluded he lived for nine days after his injury. Oh my god, that's horrible! The old death by a thousand cuts. I heard steaming is worse than burning, since it doesn't damage the pain receptors as fast. What food is expensive and overrated? A lot of food. I think a lot of food is overpriced. Anything Salt Bay serves. Gold Flake. It tastes like nothing and it's just a flex you have money to waste. Fast food. It used to be the cheaper option. Now I could go have a nice family dinner at a sit-down restaurant for what fast food is costing. All of it. Getting rough going to Aldi's. $20 at Aldi used to put in so much work. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings are simply overpriced as hell. Yeah, last time I got it, it was just so much for so little. Red Delicious Apples. Why do people hate Red Delicious? They're fine. Himalayan Pink Salt. The reddish color comes from iron oxide. Same shit as rust. In Tibet, it is considered low-grade salt, and they use it to salt the animal feeds because it has more minerals. L-E-L. Avocado Toast. I'd be able to afford a house in a good neighborhood and support a family of five on a single income if I hadn't eaten that in my 20s. I don't think I've ever eaten avocado toast, and I'm still poor, so checkmate, atheist. Whatever new fad food that got people lining up for five hours. Oh, like when In-N-Out opened here in Colorado? Yeah, that was awful. What keeps you from going insane? <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Whoa, I'm crazy. Pure spite. That's just the reason to keep living in general. Surrendering to the present in order to detach from past pains and future uncertainties. Nothing. I've gone insane. <laughs> that train left the station 30 years ago. Antidepressants. Well, at least you found something that works. Literally music. If I didn't have music, I think I would have killed someone by now. I think I actually am already insane. Seeing a trend that most people on Reddit are insane. Venting with people who vent about the same things. Sounds kind of sus to me. Cat pictures on the internet. Oh, you pure, pure soul. Fellow horror film fanatics, what's your favorite horror or thriller? If I'm being honest, and also this is not an advertisement, uh, I just really liked that new movie Barbarian. It terrified me, and I don't get scared easy. Descent for newer, Night of the Living Dead for classic. Still haven't watched The Descent, but I'm planning on it because, ooh, that looks creepy. Someone else already said my favorite, but I'd like Sinister to get a mention. The idea behind Sinister was very cool. The Thing, 1982. Masterpiece of atmosphere, characters, and especially practical effects. The biggest sin was the uh, 2011 remake where they had a lot of practical effects, but in post they opted for CG, which really bummed me out. Alien. <laughs> classic. Ellen Ripley truly is a gay icon. All right, and the Xenomorph 2. The Shining. It's Shining. Do you want to get sued? Okay, I'm going to be honest, vulnerable, and brave here. Uh, The Shining is really boring. It, it's not great. The Vivitch is very good. Still haven't gotten around to that one, but I do really like Anya Taylor-Joy, so going to have to watch it soon. Hereditary. One of the best recent horror movies. Tony Collette is phenomenal in
in this. Still an absolute crime she didn't get nominated for an Oscar, even though generally horror movies don't get nominated for Oscars, but she did so good. Come on. Silence of the Lambs. Halloween. Oh, I forgot that Halloween is the name of the movie. I was like, all right, I get you watch it during Halloween. Okay. Wolf Creek and Cabin in the Woods. When I was younger, I was too scared to watch Cabin in the Woods before I knew it was kind of a comedy. Film, The Conjuring, is my favorite horror movie. I will say, the first Conjuring is really, really solid. Then the second and third, uh, throw them away. Well, I gotta go carve a pumpkin, so thank you all so much for watching. Once again, my name is Brandon, and I will speak into your ear holes one other day. I don't know. Bye!